Before we begin into uh, today's notes, I want you to take a look at these two triangles here. And it's given that the triangles are congruent. And based on that congruency statement, what can we conclude? Given two congruent triangles, if I know that uh, triangle ABC is congruent to angle PQR, we know that angle A is congruent to angle P, angle B is congruent to angle Q, and angle C is congruent to angle R. Not only are all of the corresponding angles congruent, but all of the corresponding sides are congruent as well. So that means AB is congruent to PQ, BC is congruent to QR, and PR is congruent to AC. So now we're going to look at uh, proofs today in which we're going to use congruent uh, triangles to prove either two sides congruent or two angles congruent. At the top of your note page, it says to prove that two line segments are congruent or two angles are congruent, the first thing we want to do is choose the triangles that contain the segments or angles that are to be proved congruent. Then, once I have located the triangles in which those sides and angles belong to, we want to prove the triangles to be congruent. And once we do that, we show that the segments or angles that are proved to be congruent are the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Therefore, these parts are congruent by CPCTC. And that stands for the first C is the corresponding. The second P is for parts of the next C stands for congruent, but we'll use the symbol rather than write out the word. T for triangles and C for congruent again. So we choose the two triangles that contain the segments or angles that are proved to be congruent. We prove those triangles congruent and then the segments or angles are congruent by CPCTC. So we're going to do two together, you will do two on your own and then you can check the two that we don't do with the key to the notes. So we're going to start with question number two. It's given that DA bisects BDF. So DA is right here, angle B, D, F is right here. Now since AD is an angle bisector, I know angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. As an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Next, it's given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and CD is congruent to DE. So CD is congruent to DE. Now, I started before I identified the two triangles that contain the angles in which we're to prove to be congruent. So I'm proving that triangle CAD is congruent to EAD. So if I highlight those two angles, angle CAD is here. So that angle, and it's good to connect the two sides that form the angle so you can see the remaining side to connect to make the triangle would be right there. So some of you can see this within the picture, but I'm also going to pull the two triangles out of the picture. So I'm going to redraw the triangle over here. So this would be C, this would be D, and this is A. Now the other angle, EAD, tracing would be here. So you can see the side that would connect those two vertices would be there to form the triangle. And I'm going to draw that triangle outside the picture as well. So here's A, here's D, and here's E. Now I'm going to mark um, DC congruent to DE congruent as that was given. And then there are no other parts that I have marked in the diagram over here congruent that are not marked in those two triangles. So now, in looking at the two triangles pulled out from the picture, 
one, in any of these pictures, in any proof, you always want to look to see if you can apply the reflexive property. So do the triangles share a common side, and that would be if they're overlapping or touching, and they do share the side DA, as you can see within the picture, and also right here. So by reflexive, I can state that DA is congruent to DA. Number four, so I have two sides of um, one triangle congruent to two sides of another. Is there a way to get these two sides congruent? If I look at my givens, look what's marked in the picture, there is not. To use the other given, which is angle one congruent to angle four, since I know one's congruent to four, and two is also congruent to three, I can add these two congruent parts together and add these two congruent parts. So if the parts of the sums are congruent, then the sum is congruent to the other sum. So together, that would be angle, when I add them up, would be CDA and EDA. So number four, that is by the addition property. Now, in my picture that's this angle here, this angle here, I have these two triangles congruent by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So number five would be the two triangles congruent. I need to write my congruency statement in order of congruent angles. So I'm going to write it as I wrote the angle statement above as I wrote it in terms of um, the sides. If I read the triangles, I know side CD is congruent to DA, or side CD is congruent to ED, DA is congruent to DA, and then angle D congruent to angle D. So triangle CDA is congruent to triangle EDA, and that's by side angle side. Now I can finish with step number six, and since the triangles are congruent, I know Angle CAD is right here and right here. I know that any corresponding part is going to be congruent if the triangles are congruent. So angle CAD is congruent to angle EAD by CPCTC. You can write it out if you want. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's just shorter, just like the SAS and all the other uh, postulates to write um, the letters. To finish with number three, then you'll do one and four on your own. It's given that BD is congruent to CE. We have altitudes, and I want to prove that BE is congruent to DC. So in highlighting those segments, BE is here, congruent to segment DC here. Now those two segments are part of the triangles DBC so I will pull that out from the picture. And the other triangle is BEC, both overlapping there at the bottom. So this would be BEC. So those are the two triangles. I'm going to mark the givens now, both within the picture and in the triangle separately. Once again, that was BD congruent to EC, and in my pictures, that's here and here, the two triangles I pulled out from there. Um, altitudes. So I marked that, now I'm going to use this statement. Altitudes give us perpendicular lines. So if BE is the altitude, that would be perpendicular to AC. So BE perpendicular to AC, and I also, if DC is an altitude, that's perpendicular to AB. And that's because an altitude 
of a triangle is perpendicular to the side it's drawn to. And perpendicular lines give us right angles. So number three, so perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. And the right angles could be here and here, as well as here and here. I want to pick the two of the four that are within my triangle. So that's one and this is two. So angle one would be here and angle two is here. Now given right triangles, so angle one and angle two are right angles. Now they are right triangles. And I want to state that if I want to use hypotenuse legs. So if I have the hypotenuse of one triangle congruent to the hypotenuse of the other, then I want to use HL. Can I get BC congruent to BC? I can. That's a side that's in common, so that's reflexive property. So number four, BC congruent to BC by the reflexive property. And if I want to use HL, we start this in our notes, we have to state we have a right triangle because only right triangles have a side that we call a hypotenuse. So I'm going to say triangle CDB, with D being the right angle, and triangle BEC, with E being the right angle, are right triangles. And that's because a right triangle contains one right angle. So now that I have the right triangles, I can now state that the two triangles are congruent by HL. So let's do again triangle CDB. That would be congruent to, now it's congruent to angle C in this picture. You can see that between, say, the X and the hypotenuse would be angle B. Between the X, which is our hypotenuse, and the side that's not congruent, that would be angle C. Those two angles are congruent. Um, so C is congruent to B. Um, e is where the right angle is, and that's where D is the right angle is, so D is congruent to E. So this statement that I wrote above is actually a statement I can also use for congruency. And then number seven, the segments of BE right here and DC are now congruent by CPCTC. So BE is congruent to DC by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we abbreviate that with CPCTC.